Oh, well, hey, cats and kits, Captain Zorik here, and we're going to pick up uh, almost where we left off yesterday. I apologize that uh, the batteries died right mid-sentence there, but fortunately my night job was in the same place tonight as it, this past night as it was the night before. So, just to make sure you know that my lips are actually moving here and this isn't dubbed, um, I am pretty much where, very close to where I was when we stopped yesterday. You'll notice there is the main post office uh, with the famous post office uh, slogan there. Hey Blaze, hey Zara, thanks for joining us. I hope you saw yesterday's uh, uh, live from vacant New York because we're picking up kind of where we left off. There's Madison Square Garden, a.k.a. Madison Round Garden, a.k.a. Pennsylvania Station. I just wanted to, uh, and there you can see also the new entrance on the other corner of the post office to Penn Station. I've not been in the new Penn Station since they added these new entrances, so I wonder what it's like. Anywho, I wanted to pick up, up by, instead of going down that street to get to 32nd Street, I wanted to go up 31st Street to show a couple of things about New York City and interesting stuff and the way it's changed and the way it stayed the same. Here is this bar, Tiernanog. Okay. Now, it looks like some kind of rustic uh, uh, Irish bar, but I guarantee you, uh, first off, the building is not as small as that frontage would make it look. That was a false frontage put up on this mid-20th century uh, concrete building, but it's part of a trend in the city to make new bars look like they've been like old bars. Also, it, uh, they upscale the prices a little bit. The, uh, the uh, dining and drinking options in this area until about the past 15 years or so were more along the uh, blue collar affordable uh, spectrum, uh, good for uh, folks who work in the offices and in the construction industry and uh, and uh, various other blue collar industries that exist around here. Also, the the, the white collar, uh, the low rent white collar uh, business folk around here. But uh, since, like everything else, uh, the cleanup that began at the end of. Uh, the quote-unquote cleanup and revitalization that began at the end of the uh, Koch administration meant basically that every neighborhood that was funky and cheap and dangerous uh, became clean and shiny and sanitized and expensive. Now, here's a funky feature. Here in this uh, industrial building that actually looks like it's part of the post office or something for the style of architecture is consistent is this, a stairway with no banister. Now, the door doesn't look like it's actually a door to anything. Any, well, I mean, it's got a handle, but uh, why would they leave a stairway like that with no banister? Uh, it's just one of those funky little things. There's a door, there's a lock. It doesn't look like a particularly complicated lock, but why would somebody leave a ban banisterless stairway? Here's a stairway almost exactly the same that does have a banister. The banister looks like it was put in, it was like an afterthought. Heck, that stairway looks like an after... Where is it? That stairway looks like an afterthought almost. And here, you know, that banister was def... You can see by the holes in the sides of the steps that that banister is a replacement banister and was not the original banister when the building was built. Heck, I'm not even sure if those are the original steps. Then how the heck did they get up to that door? Anywho, yeah, see... When you look at the city, uh, pictures of the city and postcards, you see all the steel and glass office buildings in Midtown and even downtown, you see the uh, concrete skyscrapers and you think of all the famous and important and big, big uh, budget companies that live in there, that, that work there. But truth is there's lots of other, of other businesses that exist and uh, here in this uh, lower Midtown kind of area, uh, from uh, between uh, from like the teens up to the 30s uh, part of which encompasses not not the part the funky cool parts like Chelsea and uh, Hell's Kitchen which are residential neighborhoods but uh, towards uh, Fifth Avenue between like Sixth Avenue and Madison there's these uh, old school in fact maybe not east of Fifth 
Um, but there's these like old school, uh, um, you know, mid 20th century office buildings, mostly concrete. And some of them have names and some of them have fancy uh, uh, detailings in them that were picked out of catalogs when the buildings were built. But who's in there? What are their businesses? I mean, um, I've seen a few of them like uh, a place, uh, a DVD, du a CD and DVD duplication service for, for mid-level uh, art, uh, recording artists who want to make a few hundred copies of their latest CD. Um, it kind of reminds me of the world of Julius Knippel, real estate photographer. That was a cartoon strip in the New York press back in the 80s and 90s, where, I mean, what's a real estate photographer? The point is, there isn't really such a thing, but in this strip, the, uh, uh, the artist created such a job description, and he would wander around New York and look at these little nooks and crannies. He would talk to, for instance, the guy whose business was painting business names on windows. And he would take a prospective client to uh, some side street, uh, like say, I don't know, 36th Street between 6th and 7th Avenue, and he'd point up to a third story window and say, see that sign that I painted on that window? That guy's business increased by 37% the month after I painted that sign. You're on the fourth story. Just think how you could do. And that's how he would sell the job. I mean, somebody's got to paint those business names on those windows, right? Or, and what could be a business in there? The business of the product designers who designed the labels on boxes of tongue depressors. Somebody's got to do it. Well, anyway, let's say hello to everybody and I'll uh, move on with our tour here as we see uh, Madison Square Garden. We see one of the tall buildings from Hudson Yards, several of them, and we see the office building in front of Madison Square Garden. Hey, Jocelyn. Hey, Vincent. Christy. Oriana. Giovanni. Uh, Walt. Captain Marvel in the house. Uh, let's see. Adrian. Michael. Blaze. And uh, Sarah. And now... Here it is. I mean, it's not even uh, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, and there's a guy across the street there blasting away on a trumpet here in vacant New York, so, uh, right where another guy is making his living by picking out soda cans from the trash. All right? Funny story. Uh, I once, uh, uh, well, more than once, had a party in my house, and at the end of the party, I had a bunch of empty beer bottles. I took them back to the distributor early in the morning to turn them in for the nickels. And I had a whole, lug a whole laundry cart full of it. A whole luggage cart full of these things. And I show up, and there's people with grocery store carts. Three and four of them per person uh, full of these... Uh, full of these uh, uh, empty soda cans and beer bottles and stuff, and I just felt like a small timer. Uh, so anywho, here's another new entrance to Penn Station. Uh, this being in front of the office building that is also the entrance to Madison Square Garden. Um, we're passing by 11 Penn Plaza, where MST Networks has their big uh, display, you know, until just recently, that was something else. Can't remember what it was. Well, one of the, those other cable networks there. So Andrea Bocelli, by the way, is playing at Madison Square Garden in December. You know, I never realized he was blind. I thought that just having his eyes closed was his look. Um, all right, so we're getting back to where we left off yesterday, and we can see... Okay, I think I see something I didn't see before. Apparently, the Hotel Pennsylvania is redoing the whole first floor because right there in that corner used to be a bunch of fast food places. Uh, good for if you're getting on or getting off the, uh, the uh, train at Penn Station, like the Long Island Railroad or the Amtrak train, uh, or, if you're, uh, or if you've got uh, a job at one of these office buildings like like that one right there. See, look at that huge office building. 
how much stuff do you think is in there? You know, and uh, that one there. And behind that, that's a hotel. And here again is the famous Hotel Pennsylvania. Now, this is not the song, uh, what was it, the Eagles, Welcome to the Hotel Pennsylvania? No, different state, other coast. Uh, the song is Pennsylvania 6, 5,000. And you know, that is still the phone number for this hotel. If you know what numbers Pennsylvania stands for and you dial it, you will get the Hotel Pennsylvania. Now, I thought that that silver cast over there had something to do with the space that used to be the Penn Plaza Pavilion. Apparently I'm wrong because there's silver cast there as well. So I'm guessing that has something to do with a company involved with those giant screens there. But I was talking about the Penn Plaza. Sorry, I was talking about the uh, Penn Plaza Pavilion and talking about how uh, the Big Apple Comic Con had been there a lot. And uh, it was a weird space because uh, the convention space in the Hotel Pennsylvania that I originally knew uh, back when it was called the Penta Hotel uh, was a completely different space involving ballrooms and, uh, and hotel rooms. And there was a grand staircase right in the middle of the lobby. And uh, that grand staircase is no longer there. Um, there, there is uh, so, and those ballrooms are now. Uh, well, I think one of them are the space that was those ballrooms and the space that was those uh, those uh, that was the convention center back in the day is now broken up into movie studios and st uh, TV studios. I mean. And like game shows and stuff are shot here. Um, but they still have ballrooms and conference rooms up there. And sometimes Big Apple Con would use those rooms. But mostly they use the Penn Plaza Pavilion, which had been a sports authority. Now, because it was a, a repurposed space, the air conditioning is not terribly well designed for it. So there were spots in it. Where, you'd, where the temperature would be like 20 degrees higher than it would be in other parts of the uh, in other parts of the room. This made it very uncomfortable for uh, some of the guests and the artists and so forth. Uh, but their rates were very affordable, and because of a slight te oh, let's take just a quick look inside this particular part of the Hotel Pennsylvania. All right, nothing's going on in there. Anywho. Uh, because the Penn Plaza Pavilion was actually not technically part of the hotel, we didn't have to deal with the hotel workers' union to get stuff loaded in and out, which uh, cut down on the cost of the convention. So that was one of the big selling points for it. However, uh, a couple years ago, a uh, Big Apple convention held an event in the New Yorker Hotel. Ah, here we go. This is, see that staircase there? what was the back entrance to the convention space of the comic conventions that used to be held here. I think Creation mostly held them. Uh, and this is something called Zero Space. I do not know exactly what it is. Where's the video? There you go. It looks like some kind of event space that is brand new, hasn't been here, uh, just, just appeared within the past year. Anywho, but it's closed today. So go to tickets at zerospace.co with any questions. All right, so we'll figure out what that is later. Anyway, if anybody wants to look up Zero Space and tell me what it is and post it in the comments, please go right ahead. Oh yeah, by the way, over here, there used to be, now if you look at yesterday's video, I talked about Blarney Stone. Blarney Stone being either a chain or a franchise or just a common name for type of bar that also had like steam tables with good food on it. Uh, now, there used to be a Blarney Stone right here, and there isn't anymore. Uh, there are three <laughs> uh, Irish bars. Um, Faley, um, Stout, and the Celtic Rail. The Celtic Rail is what used to be the Blarney Stone. And it's just really funny now seeing that there are three of them lined up in a row. Um, they're not, uh, none of them are open 
because of the whole uh, shutdown thing, and that's why this is Captain Zorix Vacant New York coming to you live here. Um, uh, Faley, that note there, is a farewell. We had a good run and loved being here uh, note. Stout looks like it's still going to be going, and uh, I'm not sure about the Celtic Rail over there. Like I said, it's actually a brand new place. Bar and roof deck. Oh, they got a roof deck there. Uh, though I'll miss Barney Stone. It'll be nice to go up on a roof deck once it opens again. Anywho, um, so let's keep on moving because we're coming up on Herald Square, as in give my regards to Broadway, remember me to Herald Square. And now there's a little story about uh, what you're going to see up there. New York City never needed a shopping mall. Why? Because New York City is a shopping mall. I mean, tell me I'm wrong, right? We've got big stores and small stores, and you can walk down the streets and find pretty much anything you want. And if you don't like the prices here, you can walk down the street and find the prices there. Many of the stores being locally owned, it helped the local economy beyond just hiring high school kids in the sum during their summer breaks and paying the minimum wage for uh, for uh, independent contractor labor. You actually had local business people instead of chains selling a lot of stuff and providing services. Now, part of the cleanup that I said before uh, began in the Koch administration and was continued with a vengeance by Giuliani involved bringing famous chains to New York. That makes New York more friendly to people who come from other parts of the United States who are not familiar with the local businesses, but they say, hey, these are J.C. Penney. There's a Victoria's Secret. There's the Disney Store. Oh, wow. You know, like they do when they go to, like, Las Vegas or Cancun, which is why you can't tell the difference between Las Vegas and Cancun. Um, heck, you can't even tell that Cancun's not in America. I mean, you can't even tell that Cancun's in Mexico. But anywho, so we're coming up on the Manhattan Mall. The Manhattan... And, uh, and one across the street from the Manhattan Mall is another mall. I don't know what it's called these days. Now, the Manhattan Mall used to be a &S Plaza. It was a department store before that. I think it was Corvettes or... No, Corvettes was what that mall is now. And that came first at mall-wise. Now, the Manhattan Mall over here... When that converted from being a department store into a mall, the, the, it was a &S Plaza, and the design of it was done by my godfather's architectural firm, Emery Roth & Sons Architects. And on the corners and on several spots here, you can see, if you look, for instance, above the J.C. Penney, entrance to J.C. Penney, you see those little projections there sticking out of the wall. You can all see the reflections in the windows. I believe those, proje those projections may or may not have been these tall cylindrical frames and light fixtures that, uh, that were uh, trademarks of the space. And apparently a &S Plaza didn't make it as a &S Plaza because they're not there anymore and it's Manhattan Mall centered by J.C. Penney. Um, also another funny thing about that story about when it was being... I was working for my godfather's architectural firm back in those days. And, um... There is, uh... And there is... Uh, urgh, my stuff fell down. Okay. And they were building the building faster than it could be designed, practically. There are several stages of drawings that you need before you build a building. And one stage is shop drawings. And those are the drawings that you send to the buildings department to get approved. And then you get your approval or not approval uh, with uh, change this, add that, this, you know, and so forth for safety regulations and city codes and that kind of thing. And the trick is, don't tell anybody they were building from the shop drawings and just praying that they would get approved. As as they were uh, as they were rushing them to get uh, to to rushing them down to the buildings department, I was one of the guys who was 
rushing the blueprints back and forth. Another funny thing is um, there was a lack of communication from one office to the other, and there was a memo that I got that, well, I didn't get it, but I had to make copies of it, and I remember it said, please authorize the purchase of 2.2 miles of waxed string and two tin cans so we can talk with the architect, because the architect office was on, uh, was on 3rd Avenue and 53rd Street, whereas we are on 6th Avenue and 33rd Street. Okay. Oh, by the way, for those of you from out of town, 6th Avenue is officially the Avenue of the Americas, but someone was nice enough to put a sign that says 6th Avenue up there also in case you were confused. Now, these little uh, idiosyncrasies that I just described are a no... Should it, whoop, these little idiosyncrasies that I described should in no way be considered typical for the work of Emory Roth & Sons Architects. They did design about half the buildings in New York over the course of three generations. You can look it up. Oh, Blaze, I see you got a note. Uh, you've painted names on windows and passed pastors on a local church's window? Cool. So you know what that uh, you know what that's all about. Let's see. Who has joined us next? Uh, we got, a, we got a Jessica, Carol, Evan. Uh, let's see. Zero Space is a museum and an experiential site. Lasers, black light, and so on. Cool. Marcus, welcome. Bill Safar, Benjamin, Eli, welcome to the show. This is Captain's another edition of Captain Zorik's Vacant New York. And now we see Vacant Herald Square. Okay. So, I'm just going to walk us over towards the... Uh, northern end of Herald Square where I'm going to get on the subway and get on home. So, uh, uh, the reason, now those of you who are like, why aren't you home now, son? Uh, I have no home. I'm, I have no home. I sleep in the subway. It's warm there. No, I'm not Billy Batson. So, uh, uh, I know Walt, you completely got that reference. Anyway, um, because I have a night job. It's as simple as that. And that means that, uh, that I got to go home early in the morning. And so long as I'm going home early in the morning, I might as well share what I see. Um, now I am covered up, although there aren't many people out here, but I'm trying to set a good example. Know what I mean? So now this big glass block here, that used to be the Corvettes. In fact, I remember the TV commercials and I remember when it closed, it was about when I turned 13 years old or thereabouts, turned 12 or 13, and it was basically the first shopping mall in New York City. And I remember a newspaper article saying, will a shopping mall work in New York City? Uh, well, the theme was of New York, and every floor in the building was supposed to represent an avenue or a park. Well, there's only one park. There was Central Park, but like this floor was Fifth Avenue, this floor was Lexington, this floor was Madison, and so forth. You know, had a New York theme. Also, it had the Museum of Holography on the ground level. Well, I guess that concept didn't work because it's not that way anymore. Now, it's entirely an H&M. All right. But there used to be a Daffy's in there. I know because my mom bought me a suit in there. Do I still have that suit? I think I do. Um, yeah, so anyway, this is the famous 34th Street, and that means if you look that way, you can almost see, it's behind a building, the top of the Empire State Building. Don't worry, King Kong's not on it. Now, um, these buildings here, we are seeing from the opposite direction as they were seen in the movie, uh, what, which movie was it? When Worlds Collide. If you ever look in a book of apocalyptic movies or science fiction movies uh, or movies of the 1950s, you were almost certain to see When Worlds Collide. What that was about was a large planetary body uh, was going to crash into the Earth, and so a guy was building a rocket, a rocket ship that would get to that large planetary body because that planetary body would survive and the earth would not um, and when the rocket ship left the catastrophes on earth were shown and one of them was the flooding of uh, 
Herald Square. And it's one of the great all-time uh, special effects shots in 1950s cinema. And so it's actually kind of a cool movie to watch because it shows, you know, the best and worst of mankind in the face of Armageddon and that kind of thing. It's an epic, it's a classic, and you can't call yourself a science fiction fan or, for that matter, a movie historian without having seen it. But this is the Herald Square. Now, as you can see right here, even if it weren't vacant New York, no cars are on this particular strip of Broadway. Although, you get to the other side of the square, and yes, they are. Now, what, that, what that's all about is in the late 00s, as in 2000 00s, uh, there was a plan to, a plan was initiated to reduce traffic on Broadway by blocking up certain parts of Broadway and turning them into pedestrian malls, Times Square and Herald Square particularly. Also, to eliminate um, a certain, eliminate uh, one or two lanes by turning them into bike lanes, as you can see the marked bike lane here, okay, and behind me, and there's actually a bicycle coming towards me, so I'll get out of the way. Um, and also by blocking off Broadway right here, a car cannot come down a straight line down Broadway without stopping. Now, when I used to get taxi cabs, I was cheap, so I thought that by coming down from the from the Upper West Side to the West, when I Upper West Side on the West to the Lower whatever on the East, I thought that taking Broadway would be a shortcut because it's a diagonal. I don't know if it actually turned out that way, but there it was. Can't do that anymore. You got to make right right and left turns to go through the avenues and stuff. Uh, so here is, of course the world's largest department store. Now, I would not be surprised at all if like in Tokyo or Indonesia or something, there's actually a department store that has more square footage, but Macy's does take up the entire block from 34th to 35th Street, from 6th to 7th Avenue. Uh, actually, technically from Broadway to 7th Avenue because in between Broadway and 6th Avenue is this park here, and there's a statue or two that we're gonna just take a quick look before I shut the sign off. Anyway, Macy's is, of course, the company that does produce the uh, Thanksgiving Day Parade and the Fourth of, Fourth of July fireworks every year here in New York City. Um, Miracle on 34th Street is called Miracle on 34th Street because the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade ends on 34th Street. So the marchers basically come up this way. And so they're coming in this direction. And then they go around. And it's down that street there that the uh, that the brass band that the uh, marching bands and the Broadway shows and everybody else does their little uh, uh, performances and in case everybody was wondering does anybody know if those Broadway performer if there's any any performers on that parade who when they come down the avenue and they do their little number here are not actually lip syncing to a recording I mean Kiss was pretty obvious because they weren't strumming their guitars in time with the music. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Neil, uh, Neil Diamond, uh, who else have I seen on, uh, on that show? Uh, um, who did Gloria? Uh, um, what's her name? Not Barbara Streisand. Who, who was the, the pop artist at the time who did that song? Calling Gloria on a rocking horse on the, uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I remember, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. on top of the giant apple doing uh, the Candyman. Anyway, did any of them actually, maybe they're actually singing, right? But that's not what you're hearing. Uh, they probably want to make sure that nobody makes an embarrassing error uh, while they're singing. Um, on the street across from Broadway, uh, from, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Macy's, are a bunch of stores, and of course, most of them are new. There's H&M. Most of them are new, have been installed within the past five or 10 years. And 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, the stores were more affordable, but now they're more expensive. Um, and there probably was even an entertainment outlet there where you could get a copy of uh, uh, Caligula, not the infamous one, but another version, and Caligula 2, AKA Messalina Messalina, AKA Messalina Empress of Love, that I told you all about. Uh, back uh, when uh, on the uh, tour we took of vacant 42nd Street, uh, no, no, vacant 14th Street a couple weeks back. 
All right, and so the big piece of uh, civic sculpture that we are going to see before we sign off is in this little park here on Herald Square. And it is, oh, they actually have a public toilet in the park. I did not realize that. I remember a bunch of years ago, they tried to get a chain of public toilets throughout New York City, but uh, there was, I'm sure there was concern about homeless people living in them, but also there was concern that they couldn't get enough of them that were uh, uh, disabled people compatible. But anyway, for some reason, they have a memorial to James Gordon Bennett, founder of the New York Herald in 1935, and his son, James Gordon Bennett, through whose vision and enterprise, the New York Herald became one of the world's great newspapers. Now, that's not a subtle memorial at all. You've got the bell ringers, you've got uh, an allegory. Is that Medusa up top? Well, that... Okay, somebody feel free to look up who that Greco-inspired uh, goddess-type mythological allegorical figure above there is. Because she's got Medusa on her, uh, on her uh, uh, mantle there. She's got a helmet with a crest and with horses on it. So that's obviously more fanciful than practical. A spear, a shield, um, and it's got uh, workers ringing the bells. Okay, so that's that. And uh, we're just gonna take a quick peek up Sixth Avenue and you'll see Back there somewhere is 42nd Street, and uh, before 42nd Street is the park that is behind the New York Public Library. So, anyway, I had a full night's work. I've had a full morning sharing this all with you. No one's close behind, so I'm just going to open up for just a second. I'll put this back on. I just want to say um, thank you all for watching these. I'll try to come back with you at least once a week with... Uh, some piece of vacant New York, so long as New York is vacant. Uh, let me say hello to who's new there. Anna, Charissa, Armand, hey, Hit the Mat is in the house. Louisa, how are you? Hey, Jason, SCA, St. Clair, Benjamin. Okay, and everybody else, Bill, I've already said every, I've already said hello to everybody else out there, I think. Oh, Marcus, uh, Evan, Asa, Carol, Jessica, yeah, Blaze, Jocelyn, Vince, Vince, how are you? Uh, what's that? CZ Redemption in the house. Oh, a whole bunch of new people. Christy, Oriana, Giovanni. Uh, there's Walt. Okay, now we've rolled back into everybody. Wait, Michael Freeman? Michael Freeman. Uh, that's uh, King Arthur in the house. All right, good. Um, okay, so thanks you all. Thank you all very much for watching. Um, I love you all because doing these little things give me a chance to share this city uh, in which I was born, raised, and loved so much with all of you. Uh, share some of the history that doesn't always make the books. May give uh, so that if you ever, if you ever come to these spots, you can say, "Hey, I remember when Captain Zork told me about that," and that makes everything more interesting when you can connect it to something instead of it just being in a vacuum, right? Somebody tell me I'm right. Uh, yeah, one, one, one other interesting thing over in that direction. If you cut through those buildings there. Um, is uh, pretty much the first role-playing game store in New York City, The Complete Strategist on 33rd between 5th and Madison. Okay, anywho. And, uh, oh yeah, uh, JHU, formerly Jim Hanley's Universe, which is now run by the former, by the folks who used to work there because Jim Hanley himself is like retired and moved to Staten Island or something like that, I have no idea. But, uh, yeah. I'm out of here, folks. The so next time that you'll see me, will on Facebook Live, planned, that is, is going to be tomorrow for from 7 to 8.30 for our weekly, um, our weekly SCA, Society for Creative Anachronism Rules, fighter practice and training session. Um, we've been uh, doing warm-ups and basic drills. We've added, uh, we've added a repertoire of about uh, six or seven blows. Uh, we're doing sword blocks these days and footwork, so uh, tune on in for that. That's on this very Facebook page, uh, uh, Zorik Lakedra. You know how to spell it. You're on this Facebook page, Z-O-R-I-K-H. Um, and that gets reposted on the YouTube channel. <coughs> 
um, New York Knights Combat, youtube.com slash New York Knights Combat 1. And so you can see all the past ones there. And then on Wednesday from 3 to 3.30 uh, is Captain Zorick's uh, Socially Distant Music Madness. And I'll be doing that from a new location like I do every week. Okay, so um, that's about it, everybody. Any latecomers to the show? Hey, Roger, good to see you here. Jamie, thanks for joining. Uh, this, of course, is going to be saved to Facebook. And all these little uh, vacant New York tours, I'm going to put them on Captain Zorick's YouTube channel as well. So, thank you very much, everybody. Clean up, cover up, and uh, call your mom, call your friends. Um, you know how people have been saying that uh, the shutdown is going to increase the number of suicides? Well, if you're suicidal, call somebody and talk it out. If you know someone who's su suicidal, call them and talk it out. And I'm going to go f post on this Facebook page a bunch of suicide prevention hotlines and things like that so that you've got somewhere to go. All right. Uh, so that being the case, that being said, like I said, clean up, cover up, stay physically distant, but socially active until we can figure out how to make this COVID-19 a thing, something that we don't have to worry about like we're worrying about today. And hopefully we'll stop fighting over it too. All right. Captain Zorik coming at you. Love you all.